Uh, on behalf of Nathan and Marcus, I extend greetings and gratitude to all of you gathered here today to witness this evening. My name's Chris, and I've known Nathan for more than 20 years since we were in journalism school at the University of Kansas. We worked a few semesters on the college paper, and during our senior year, when Nathan became editor-in-chief, he asked me to be his managing editor. I had always considered Nathan a bit of a rival, but now here he was demonstrating trust in me. And friends, this is when I first realized that Nathan has colossally poor judgment. <laughs> <laughs> and yet somehow we've managed to remain friends ever since. In fact, Nathan might be the only friend of mine whose birthday I remember every year. And granted, that's easy because it is literally the day before mine. <laughs> well, the real reason why I'm so delighted every time his birthday rolls around is that I get to fulfill my annual tradition of crafting an elegantly worded insult <laughs> for which Nathan has no good comeback. <laughs> <laughs> Thus, while many of you may know Nathan as one thing, I know him as a bloviating heel and lamacious pop dude. <laughs> you may know him as a relative. I know him as a mendacious varlet and flagitious oligophrenia. <laughs> you may know him as a trusted colleague. I know him as a Habitating galactophage and eulogonous celebrity gullion, <laughs> as a jumentous fustilone and fulminating horn swagger. <laughs> and now we come to the wedding of Marcus Mervall and adulpated bladder sky. <laughs> <laughs> In all seriousness, this is an occasion to celebrate, of course, but because one purpose of a wedding ceremony is to solemnize the marriage, this is also an occasion for reflection. We recognize the merger of two families into one, and remember the loved ones we've lost. It is also an occasion for appreciation, in no small part, because not so long ago, the right you exercise today was withheld from you. In the words of one writer, no union is more profound than marriage, for it embodies the highest ideals of love, fidelity, devotion, sacrifice, and family. In forming a marital union, two people become something greater than once they were. Marriage embodies a love that may endure even past death. What makes these words significant is that they were authored by Justice Anthony Kennedy, writing for the majority in the Burgerfell versus Hodges. The Supreme Court struck down state laws banning same-sex marriage. The court's opinion is about one chapter in a long story of struggle for equal rights. That is not a story you could control. Today, though, the union you enter into begins a narrative that is entirely yours. You get to write it, and you get to craft the language. Dude, seriously, like the song. <laughs> 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 Shut it up, Chris. <laughs> okay, I'll be good. <clears throat> Two of you have traveled all over together. You to achieve your goal, finally, of visiting all 50 U.S. states. Woo Oregon, in fact, is the last state Mark's had to cross off his list. So, in your case, 
not only is marriage a story that you get to compose, but it's also a journey whose chores, whose course you get to chart. There's a poem I love that perfectly distills the metaphor. It's called The Master Speed by Robert Frost, and I'll read it for you. Do you, Marcus, take Nathan to be your lawfully wedded husband who have and hold in sickness and in health, for richer and for poorer, as long as you both shall live? Yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> do you, Nathan, take Marcus to be your lawfully wedded husband to have and to hold in sickness and in health, for richer and for poorer, as long as you both show it. Yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> Marcus and Nathan have also chosen to write their own vows, and they will exchange them now, marking the promises. <laughs> <laughs> but in true millennial fashion <laughs> um, and they'll be translated by my amazing sisters too in Spanish Nathan I vow to be the best person I can around you I vow to never take you for granted to honor you every day for all that you've done for me, my family, and my friends. I vow to pretend to always love the Jayhawks of Kansas City. I vow to share the glee and the love that you have of Kansas. I vow to challenge us to be the best, to adventure, to explore, and experience all that is available to us in this universe. I vow to thank you every day for taking a chance on me for believing in me. I vow to, when you're old and pruny, to forgive you for farting and forgetting that I don't like pizza. <laughs> I vow to always inspire fun in our lives, to forgive you when you roll your eyes when I repeat myself. I vow to honor you above my future Volvo or any other car I'm the <laughs> I vow to indulge your Taco Bell inclination. <laughs> I vow to be alongside you for the good times and the bad, to be your crying shoulder, and to push you to be the best. I vow to love you as long as I live and beyond, and will haunt you too if need be. <laughs> I vow to honor your love of cats, because they leave paw prints all over your heart. Do you like that, Lisa? <laughs> I vow to always praise the good you see in others. I'm proud that you've pushed me to see all 50 states, a charge that all of us should have, and a testament to who you are as a person. One who values everything and everyone. I vow to, I vow to always thank you for allowing me to be your person. I vow to always protect you. I vow to travel the ends of the world with you in excitement and wonderment. I vow to be grateful to your family, your friends, for not only supporting and helping you in life, but to me as well. I vow to always keep the Kansas-California rivalry fierce. <laughs> and finally, I vow to treasure this moment you created as a symbol for us for the rest of my time on this planet and beyond. Love you. Decided we lower tech here. <laughs> I have never been good at romance. Uh, throughout our relationship, many of your messages to me have said things like, I treasure you, and I'm so lucky to have met you. My typical response has been something like, So, 
<laughs> You've discovered that a romantic night in for me is turning on Star Trek and microwaving a lean cuisine. <laughs> and a romantic night out is going to a Star Trek movie and then to Taco Bell. <laughs> And though our, you are now mortified that I mentioned Star Trek and Taco Bell in my wedding vows, <laughs> a little part of you finds it cute. And that little part of you will win out, because it always does. You have always been the more chivalrous partner, as you often remind me. So let me make that fit today and tell you what you have meant to me and what I hope we mean to each other for us. For many years, I thought being gay was the worst thing that had happened to me. The shame and self loathing the burden of a terrifying secret, the painful process of coming out. But the worst part, the part that haunted me most, lying awake at night and fueled an immovable sense of despair, was the sense of isolation. The feeling that I wasn't committed to love or deserving of being loved. I tried to envision what my future life might be like and where most people saw spouses and homes and kids. I saw darkness. But how lucky I was. Because of who I am, I got to meet you. And now I get to, get to marry you. I blame this on Chris. He started. <laughs> 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 I the one who needed the tissue. <laughs> <clears throat> If that was the trial, it was worth every second for the chance to meet you. If I was surrounded by darkness before, I now stand next to the sun, someone who radiates warmth to everyone in his orbit. Now I look ahead and see a brilliant glow, and I never want it to fade. Fortunately, I have you as a guide, so now I make these pledges to you. You see the good in every person you meet. And so I pledge to always see the good in you. You always extend a helping hand. And so I pledge to offer my aid to you whenever you need it. You're quick with a smile and generous with a laugh. And so I pledge to try to make you smile and laugh, hopefully most of the time with me. <laughs> <laughs> you know to focus on what matters and not sweat what doesn't. So I pledge to breeze with you through the small stuff and make the important moments special. You enjoy adventure and novel experiences, and so I pledge to provide you with a life that never stops offering new horizons, and new horizons to gaze for and new directions to explore. And most important, you're brimming with love, so I pledge to do what I can to earn that love and to return in full measure. I know we'll still have our moments when I want to be romantic by going to Taco Bell. That's uh, three mentions for those counties. <laughs> That's one in his, I think. <laughs> but I pledge we can alternate with Arby's. <laughs> and I never want you for a moment to doubt that I love you or that I am not dedicated to it. For if in the end it's ashes to ashes and dust to dust, what counts is the in between. And in between lies the promise of joy and fulfillment and the indescribable richness of loving and being loved. In between lies the promise of being seen. I have the great honor of pronouncing you, Mary. You may now seal the union with a kiss. Ladies and gentlemen, may I introduce for the very first time as a married couple.